welcome to this edition of SAC News in Focus. I'm Andrew Lapp. I'm joined today by an alumni from the Digital Media Center here at Santa Ana College. Rudy Garcia joins me to talk about uh, how his time here changed his life since graduation. Rudy, thanks for coming back, man. No, thank you for having me. Like, I love coming here. I love seeing all the changes, you know, because this was, uh, as you said, a really big part of my life. And um, it's really good to be back. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting, too, to hear, like, what you remark on. Like, oh, you guys didn't have that. Or, oh, that's new now. Yeah. You know, because in the past year, we have made a couple upgrades. Oh, yeah, more than a couple, I would say. Like, everything is, like, what, HD now? Everything's like, HD now. Yeah, there's a bigger set. Back in my time, we were still using tapes. Do you, do you know what a tape is? I'm no. not familiar. No? Okay. Is that some type of uh, ancient technology? Y yes, some yes. Some type of antique? Some type of antique, yeah. Like vinyl records or? Not quite Pocket that watches? Old. Not quite that old, no? <laughs> but yeah. So, so where have you been working uh, for the past year? So for about the, the past year, I've been working at the NBC affiliate in Bakersfield. It's okay. uh, KGET, Channel 17. Um, and uh, it's, been, it's been one heck of a ride, I must say. I've uh, grown a lot. I've learned a lot. I've improved a lot um, since I started. Actually, I just had my evaluation uh, a couple weeks ago, and they said I've improved a lot. That's interesting. Yeah. How exactly do you think your work has improved in the past year since you've been, uh, since you've gone from being a student to being on the job? Um, I think uh, I've gotten faster, um, you know, in mm. terms of shooting. I've gotten um, faster in terms of like, okay, what shots do I really need to be able to tell a story? Mm. Um, you know, capture some cool moments, like as you just saw, you know, the helicopter shot um, of a rescue. And so that that kind of a thing. I'm always working on something, and yeah. that's something that I learned here at SAC. To always be working on something. What is that kind of stuff like, actually? Like when you're doing like those more action shots that we just saw, like the helicopter shots. You know, when you're covering something that's like a crime scene, something that's moving really quickly. What's that like? Um, I think for the helicopter shot, that was a, that was a whole different beast because when they were taking me, like I was live for a good six minutes, and that's okay. like an eternity in TV. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's a lot of space to fill. Um, that's a lot of space to fill, yeah. yeah but, you know, the, the helicopter was coming, and I heard in my ear, like, hey, stay on the helicopter. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was just awesome to, like, capture that. And, yeah. you know, when you play it back, when I played back the air check and I watched it, the way that the anchor talked over it, it was like, it just, like, it just worked. You were in the zone there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that, um, that a, a few people here know you know, people who took classes with you, was that you actually covered a couple things like fires and stuff while you were still a student yeah. here at the DMC. Right. What was that like, and how how has that like helped prepare you for where you are now? Um, I think uh, I was always like kind of like a scanner head, and so that's uh -huh. where I I have you know I had a police scanner and I heard a call for a fire. And then I was actually just outside the Digital Media Center when Wait, I saw I'm people. sorry, this is when you were a student? This is when, when I was a student, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was- No like, other I, hobbies? I, I got into a scanner, you know, I was like, oh yeah, you know, that's how news people get their, get their stories. Mm -hmm. And so I heard of like a fire, and I knew it was somewhere in Santa Ana, because that's what the scanner told me. Okay. And then I was outside the Digital Media Center and I saw a few fire trucks kind of pass by in that general direction. Okay. And so I- you know, I didn't have gear at the time, but I gathered up a few students and we went to go, we went to go shoot it. Someone had a camera, someone had lights, and someone wanted to kind of go be there to interview. Oh, that's and so we set all that up and, you know, it looked pretty cool um, as a package here. Yeah, and that was the first story on my demo reel that I had when I uh, went to go look for a job. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that story <laughs> that you caught here, mm -hmm ended up being like, did they, did they comment on that at all when you were oh, like, yeah. in the interview process? Oh yeah, they, 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 they questioned everything. And I think part of the reason why they question stuff is they want to make sure that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. What they, are the they, kind of things that they question you on? Like, do they question you on more journalism uh, side of things or more like the technical photography side of things? For me, uh, because I was a photographer, it was more of uh, the photography side of things. So they okay. asked, you know, why did I light it that way? Where were my lights? You know, they, they commented on the, on the framing, you know, okay, your, inter shot, your interview shot is framed correctly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your shots are kind of what we would expect if you were covering a fire. You hit all the boxes. I hit all the boxes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so. interesting. Was that, um, how long had you been coming here to the DMC before that story happened? Because I'm interested to know like what your level was exp of experience was uh, like when you kind of like embarked on that. Oh, I was probably 
you know, f at least four years into my time here at the DMC, and it, it took me a while because and I was been working. Taking, like, and uh, television and broadcast classes that whole time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it took me a while to finish the program because I was working and everything, but I think at that time I was maybe four, four years into the program here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And it's, um, you know, the program, it teaches you a lot of, you know, the basics, you know, how to shoot well, how to compose your shots, um, making sure your stuff is lit, making sure uh, you can hear the people you're interviewing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, a lot of the basics really like go a long way, you know, using a tripod and yeah. like all of that. But it does take a little bit of time to kind of like create that as like a muscle memory checklist, don't you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. It, it took a while. I mean, even through the program, you know, in in the class, you would get you would get the critiques like, why did you shoot it this way? This shot is too dark. You know, mm. you should have moved your interview subject. You know, a little bit closer to the camera to you know so you can see the background a little more. Yeah. And so it it takes a while to kind of you know, get the feel for like what you need to shoot and how you need to shoot it. Okay. Uh, and how, how would you say the critiques that you got as a student, uh, like a student reporter, how do those compare to what, you know, the actual critiques you get on the job? Um, okay, so I think, you know, as a student, it's like, I feel like here, it's a safe place for you to practice mm -hmm. and like kind of mess up and make mistakes and like no one really sees it. You know, yeah. when you start working, it's like everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to be like on your game. Yeah, um, they're paying for that content. They're paying for <laughs> the content, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you actually have viewers and like a station and everyone is watching. Mm -hmm. And so um, in terms of the, the critiques, you know, I think for me, most of my critiques come from like the other photographers at the station. Like we'll mm -hmm. watch each other's stuff and we'll be like, hey, that was like a great shot. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, shoot it, like try, try this next time. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, I taught another photographer some lighting, um, you know, some, you know, techniques for lighting. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, okay, because I taught you this, I have a right to <laughs> quiz you. I have a right to quiz you. That's and funny. And so he does, uh, you know, the morning show. And uh -huh. every now and then he'll be like, hey, teacher, let me turn in my quiz. And he'll send <laughs> me screenshots of where he set his lights up, mm -hmm. where he put his interview subject. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool to, like, you know, kind of, get that critique. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that you brought to them that you didn't necessarily learn there, but that, like, you, you had that skill. Yeah, I think, you know, lighting-wise, I kind of already knew how to do it from here, you mm -hmm. know, um, and um, a few of my pieces that I did here at the Digital Media Center were pretty well, like, lit, and I was able to experiment here, and so I brought yeah. that over there to some of the photographers, some of the other photographers there, they know how to light. But, yeah, you know. All right, that's interesting. I want to ask you a little bit more about like some advice that you have for students here. Sure. But first, we're going to have to take a short break. Stay tuned for more SAC News in Focus. I chose Santa Ana College due to the fact that they do offer a lot of help for their students when it comes to the CT, CTE program. If I do want to get certificates, so that's a great help. Professors are here to, to like actually tell you, like, hey, I'm here to help you. The MESA program, they like lend me books for like my chemistry, my bio, and the learning center. They helped help me so much. My favorite thing here is the people. I love the people. Welcome back to SAC News in Focus. We've been speaking with Rudy Garcia, a SAC alumni. So Rudy, um, before we went to break, I mentioned that I want to get a few, um, you know, like tidbits of advice, you know, some nuggets of wisdom from you. What are the, some of the things that you think are, um, you know, just pieces of wisdom that people may not hear from the teachers here, but that, you know, being a year into it on the job, you know, in the field every day, what would you tell students here now? Well, I would tell students here now, listen to your teachers here um, because <laughs> they will help you get that job. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I, I would also say always be working on like your craft. I mean, when I was here, I was always working on shooting or editing. or I was always working on something. I was yeah. always experimenting with something. And I think that's the way to learn um, because there's uh, network photographers that I've seen out in the field, and I just like admire them. Mm. You know, and I will like ask some stuff and I'll be like, hey, you're really good. And they'll always tell me, oh, yeah, there's still a lot I'm learning. 
you know, or yeah. there's a new piece of equipment, or there's like a new type of like lighting that they have that they're experimenting with. And oh, so th even the people at the network level are still always working on something. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's pretty key too. That's the only way you're gonna get better. I mean, this photographer that I was talking about before the break, he's really good. Mm -hmm. And you know, he just needs some help with lighting. And now he's working on lighting and his stuff is looking awesome. You know, so yeah, that's so I think cool. That's, that's great. the main piece is always be working on something. Yeah. How um, how did you kind of manage to do that as a student here at the Digital Media Center? Because I know sometimes like between semesters, there's a little bit of downtime. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've noticed like with my own work. Right. When I have that downtime, I tend to lapse a little bit and my skills tend to kind of wane. OK, so I think what I did in that case is, yeah, because like sometimes you will be really tired and you're going to be like, I don't want to pick up a camera. I don't want to set up lights, you know, mm -hmm. just because you're exhausted. Um, and so the thing to do in that case is, you know, you start watching other people's demo reels online. Um, there's a great organization. It's called the NPPA. It's mm -hmm. the National Press Photographers Association. And they have a YouTube channel. And if you just watch that in terms of how they shoot, you can get a lot of ideas and you can work on your skill that way. It's and like mental exercise. It's like mental exercise, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing what other people are doing and you're thinking like, oh, maybe I should copy that next time. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, but would you say a lot of that stuff is probably also covered in like a lot of the classes and by like- Oh yeah, in here? terms of like, you know, framing, um, you know, you always, always, always go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can learn here is like, you know, your framing, your lighting, your exposure sound, um, how, you know, how to cut stuff to tell a story. That's, mm -hmm. all, that's all taught here. And then you want to start getting fancy or you want to start getting good, then mm -hmm. you start looking at other people's work. You know what's interesting there is um, the storytelling aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we have a visual medium and I think a lot of people come into this with the expectation that I'm going to shoot things about an event or, or a happening. Right. How do you go from that to turning that event into a story that you tell? Okay, so uh, I want to kind of focus in on kind of the photographer part of that. Yeah, yeah. from from the visual from side. From the of visual things. side of things. Yeah. So I think you know the thing that I feel students forget about a lot when they're starting is how to shoot things in like a sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, when I'm at uh, let's say I'm at some festival, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, the first thing I might shoot is like. Uh, a wide shot of all of the booths that are down the street mm -hmm. and then you know the next thing I might shoot is like uh, or when it when it gets cut the next thing that you would see would be you know kind of a close-up of maybe people walking or people looking at something at one of the booths so it's kind of like mm -hmm. you know seamless does that make sense or someone is like you see someone looking at a cup on the table and mm -hmm. then the next shot is a closer shot of them picking up the cup take about to take a drink yeah so it's like those basic kind of elements of like, you know, what are you expecting to see next? Yeah, one of the things that I, I've heard here quite, uh, quite often is keeping like, like a string of continuity through your oh, shots. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, there was a story that uh, one of the reporters did at the station. It was about uh, a day that a water park was opening, mm -hmm. you know, or um, in Bakersfield, they have like all these like water parks and stuff. So one of this one particular one had a, had a slide. Mm -hmm. And so the way that he initially cut it, it didn't have, you know, the continuity. So first you're going to see someone at the top of the slide, mm -hmm. and then you're going to see them coming down the slide. What would you expect to see next? Probably someone. Probably coming someone down coming down the <laughs> middle portion of the slide, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I saw it initially, and the way that it, he cut it first, I was like, there's something off about that. And mm -hmm. then um, after I went in and I showed him, I was like, hey, like, you know, maybe you should try to cut it this way where you see someone, you might not see the exact same person, but you expect to see someone coming down that slide. So use that shot. Yeah. You know, I was like, think about the sequencing. And so we went over that lesson. The next story he did was someone about, um, someone who had, um, I think her truck stolen. Mm -hmm. And she was in like a motorized scooter. And then the way that he shot it, he started with this great opening shot of like the person coming in on their scooter. And then it was a close-up of like the scooter coming into place, mm -hmm. and so I was like, "That's it, right there." Yeah, you know? um, it's or just what your brain naturally would think. What would think you would see next. next? Yeah, yeah, because then you almost start forgetting that you're watching something that's cut together, and right. it feels more like something that you're just 
experiencing and watching. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, it should be kind of like one almost like seamless piece. And like I still struggle with this, you know, mm. I'll, I'll admit that. Um, but it's just like trying to figure out like what goes together. Um, yeah. Another example of that was we covered a uh, Vietnam, it was a Vietnam War memorial ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the shots is like uh, of the trumpet, he's playing taps. And okay. so what he did with that shot is he heard, you would hear the trumpet play, but you wouldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And you would see all of the, the people there saluting. And then you see the trumpet. You know? okay. So that you see that that part told the story like, hey, what are they saluting? Where are they facing? Yeah. And so that piece is really so it almost kind of well. brings the viewer like into that moment. Mm -hmm. Like if you were here, you might hear it, but you might not see it right away. Right. That's interesting. So playing with sound is really a key part of telling stories too. And I, I urge like students to really uh, play with the sound when they're telling a story. Oh, that's super yeah. interesting. We're going to have a long conversation about this afterwards. Well, yes, we will. Uh, but that's going to wrap up this week's edition of SAC News in Focus. Uh, we'd like to thank our guest, Rudy Garcia, and be sure to catch our regular edition of SAC News. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We'll see you next time. Thank you.